Hi guys, I'm Jeff from RVHelpOnline.com. I'm coming to you today with a gear review. This is one of the, in my opinion, one of the biggest gear pieces that you could do to make your RV life a little bit easier. So what I'm going to talk about today is it's called the Camco Cyclone. This is an RV holding tank uh, vent. It takes, it replaces your stock vents from your factory which are just small caps and I'll insert a picture later on into the video so that you can see exactly what we're doing. This is a very straightforward upgrade. It's very easy. I would rate it on a scale of 1 to 5, 5 being the hardest and 1 being the easiest. This is probably a number 1. It's very easy to do. So what comes in the package, I actually have two of them here because I have two vents. I'm going to put one on my black tank vent as well as my gray tank vent. I don't know if you've ever gone down the road and you've ended up getting to your site, you have to get out and use the bathroom and you get everything set up and you go inside your bathroom and the first time you use it you get a blast of poop smell in your face. It's not fun for anybody and it can also make the whole trailer smell. What this does is it creates a venturi where it takes the gases from down in the black tank and it allows it to be sucked out the back. These, they spin so that whichever way the wind is going is constantly drawing those gases out of your black tank so you don't ever get the smell inside your RV. It's made a big difference for us and we've had them in all of our trailers. Um, it also operates with the wind so if it's just a light breeze even it will spin and it will allow it to keep all those gases out while you're parked. So what comes in the package is, is very simple. A very simple set of instructions which is just laminated on the cardboard on the inside of the cardboard. Your actual vent, the cyclone, the top cap that you'll put on that goes over to create a seal and then three screws. The only tools you need to install this is a Phillips head screwdriver that fits into your screws, a putty knife to remove the factory die core or the factory sealant which seals it around it. I like to keep a pair of PVC cutters on hand because you may need to trim off the top of your exhaust pipe to make this fit properly. It's very easy to do. You can use a hacksaw or any other item that is able to cut through the plastic. This is just something I found that's very easy to use as well as a drill and a 3 30 seconds drill bit to start your pilot holes for your three screws. The other thing you'll need is replacement sealant for around your cyclone vent. I just use a caulking tube and the sealant that I prefer is the Dicor roof sealant. It's self leveling and that's what all the factories and uh, RV companies use to do work on the roofs of the RVs. It just goes on just like a caulk tube or just like caulking like you would a bathroom but it levels itself out so that it seals it. The only hitch with this is that you can't do it during cold weather and that you shouldn't do it on rainy days. The roof needs to be dry and it needs to be let it set up for 24 hours. It, it can usually be used within after four hours so it's important not to get moisture on it but it takes a full 24 hours to set up. Now today's a very warm day. It's about 80 degrees here and so some considerations when you're up on your roof first of all is safety. You don't want to be going up and down your ladder toting all of these individual items. That's why I have the bucket here. So I've attached a string to the handle and I'm going to go and put everything in the bucket and then we'll go and continue and show you guys how we're doing this from the roof. So I'm going to put everything on the bucket, throw my roof up on or my rope up on top of the roof and then we can hoist it up so that we're able to do it safely to get onto the roof. Hey guys, so we're up on the roof now and we're going to go ahead and show you I'll show it in the video, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how we're going to go ahead and change this out. Um, it's a little bit of a lengthy process, so I'm going to go ahead and cut and stop sometimes or speed it up so that you guys don't have to watch me doing the entire thing. But So this is basically what we have. This is your factory RV vent cover. 99% of the RVs out there are going to have something similar to this. This is a rubber membrane roof, and one other thing I was going to talk about before we get going too far is when you get up on your roof, especially on warm days like today, it's important that you don't pivot. As you can see, the, the, well this is kind of a poor example, but you can see the wrinkles here. They get pinched and you don't want to be twisting your feet on top of these because it can twist and ruin your membrane or tear a hole in it. So it's just real, real careful that we really walk gingerly up on the roof. So we're going to go ahead and start out, pull out all my tools here. <clears throat> So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to expose our heads of our screws. So there should be probably five or six screws in here. We can kind of see them through the die core. So what I'd like to do is just take a putty knife and just expose the heads. 
you can see this stuff is <clears throat> very malleable it's very easy to work with and most of these are going to be screw heads which are either square drive or Phillips it, it accepts both of them we're just going to keep exposing our heads and you don't want to really remove too much of this material because it'll be used you can use it again later while you're resealing your roof Like I say, this stuff's very easy to work with. It's just very simple to use. It can be a little complicated though, trying to figure out exactly where your screw heads are if the factory did a good job of doing the die core, which hopefully they did. Okay, so I'm only seeing a handful of screws here. Very easy just to screw them out. It's only into the plywood of the roof. We'll go ahead and put these items back into our bucket to save them. We're not going to be reusing these at all. You can see this stuff is very sticky. Okay. So now that we've got that, we're going to look for our lip. This is just basically a flange. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our putty knife and just start to pry up on our stuff. It's important that we be real careful around the membrane, but remember any tears we have, we have roof sealant that we can use to replace it. You can see it's pulling up around the roof membrane, which is fine. We may have missed a screw here. Yep, we missed one there. That's easy enough to get. Okay. Just gingerly pull up on it. Might even have one more, yep. going to keep feathering this around okay nope I'm bleeding a little bit that's okay though okay so as you can see this is probably what your roof is going to look like if we pull this back you can see a little bit down in there it's just the insulation it's probably hard to see but there's insulation down here your top plywood and then your lower plywood from the inside of your RV. I'm going to go ahead and cut and I'm going to go and put a bandage on my phone and then we'll go ahead and recontinue where we left off. Okay guys, we're back. I got all bandaged up obviously. It was a cooking accident last evening that I thought was all done bleeding, but apparently this uh, redid it. So don't be afraid. You're not going to cut yourself on this. It was already on my finger. So we'll, we'll pick up where we left off. So as you can see, we have all of the die core pulled off. We've got our roof membrane down. It's all solid. It looks really good. We also have our pipe exposed, okay? So this one's cut at a 45 degree angle, it looks like. Um, we'll go ahead and test fit it before we do anything to it to make sure that our pipe is gonna fit on properly. It fits on fine, and we also wanna make sure that it spins freely, okay? Which it does. So we're good with that. Now, there's only one key with this. Before you really get into this project, you wanna make sure that you put your collar on. Because if you don't put your collar on there, then it's going to be, you're not going to be able to fit it over the top of this. So it's important you put the collar down first. It slides on. And as you can see, we have a little bit of a gap, which is fine. Okay? That's completely acceptable. So with the collar, this is the only really tricky part with this. Is you got to keep the collar up while you're drilling your holes. Because you want those screws to be underneath the collar. So I have my 3 30 seconds bit. And I'm just going to do three holes all the way around. Yep. As you can see it goes in very simply 
it's not super critical on where these holes are at. Okay, before I do in the next couple holes though, or the next hole, I'm gonna go ahead and put one of my screws in so it doesn't pivot on me and I don't lose where that hole was. So once again, these are just standard Phillips head screws with my Phillips head screwdriver that I used to pull those other ones off. Match it up to my pilot hole that I've already done and just simply screw it in. Okay, and I already did one more hole, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that one as well. And then we'll drill our final third hole and then we'll seal it and we'll be done. It just needs to be finger tight. This isn't actually a major part of what is gonna be holding it down. The die core is gonna do a great job of holding this in place. This is simply just holding it to where it needs to be. Go ahead and pull this up. Drill our final hole. Now it's secured. We can go ahead and test it. It's not going anywhere. Okay, go ahead and push our collar down. As you can see, we exposed a little bit of our roof here when we were tearing out the die core. It's not a big deal, honestly. I'm just going to kind of smush this around. It's nice and pliable. Okay. Now the fun part. Now we get to do our die core. If yours is set up anything like mine, your caulking gun, it just simply has a little cutter on the end. Just trim the end. Obviously, it's not working real good. I think it's too warm. That's why we keep a pocket knife in our hands. All right, so it doesn't really matter how big the hole is. Make sure you puncture your die core seal inside there, or the little aluminum seal that's just inside the top of the tube if you've never used caulking before. Set it in, and with this stuff, it's very forgiving, so it's not super critical on where you do it. The most important parts of where you're going to caulk or put the die core all over your lip, any air pockets that you may have, and I like to do more than less. I would rather have a good seal. And as you can see, with it in the sun, it's already starting to level itself out on that side that I started on. Okay? And then we want to make sure we get around the lip of this collar as well. Try and keep it off of this, because this is the part that spins. And I'm using white. You can see that the other die core that was already on the roof was the tan. It doesn't make a whole lot of difference, honestly, on which color you use. And I like to do an extra bead around just to ensure that everything's taken care of. Okay guys, so we're back. Sorry about that quick cutout. The phone got too hot and it uh, turned itself off. So that's the other disadvantage of trying to video on a hot day on a roof. So anyways, as you can see, I just finished die coring it all off. I ensured that all of the spots, as you can see, this stuff's already started to level itself out. It's already starting to capture itself. One last thing you want to check is to make sure that this still spins freely and just double check that you don't have any exposed gaps on any of your sides that you've done. Um, so this one, like I said, I usually over, over die core it because I don't want any roof leaks, but we'll go ahead and go downstairs and uh, remember to safely get off the roof and pack up all your tools back in your bucket and lower it off. Hey guys, Jeff here again from RVHelpOnline.com. We just finished our project up on the roof of doing our two Cyclone, uh, Camco Cyclone RV sewer vents. Uh, it, took, it only took about 20 minutes to do both of them. It's a pretty quick upgrade to do, and I think it makes a huge difference. Uh, you can find this item linked in our Amazon store, which you can also access through rvhelponline.com. I encourage you to go over there, check out the website. We have many more upgrades and many more tips and tricks on how to help you make your summer plans the best for this RV season. Take care and safe travels.